Our shop windows are the visible face of a global trading machine that operates behind the scenes to satisfy our daily needs. But are these windows as transparent as they seem? This film explores the mechanics of an industry that silently keeps our world spinning and hides behind every tag. Excuse me. Yeah. You work here, yeah? yeah? I wanted to know if you have any information about this jacket, about how, uh, how much trouble is involved to uh, create this jacket. Well, this uh, jacket, as it says here, it's made in Bangladesh. Made in Bangladesh. Mm -hmm. Okay. And that's all we know about the jacket. Yeah, that's, yeah. Where did the products we take for granted come from? My shoes were made in China. My shirt was made in Indonesia. All these different pieces, items, came from places across the ocean. And it's really incredible that all of these products can be shipped around the world, and yet my outfit was still really cheap. Thousands of miles traveled for just a handful of dollars. These came by ship, these came by ship. My shoes probably came by ship. The microphone certainly, all this technology came by ship. The camera came by ship. You have containers filled with scrap metal, you have containers filled with hay, you have containers filled with waste paper. From the energy we use and the food we mainly consume through to the gadgets we love to play with. It's 90% of absolutely everything. 90% of everything consumed. It all came on a shipping container from the other side of the world. Sea shipping has taken command of our society an essential link in a well-lubricated supply chain. It works out of sight to quench our thirst for consumption. Shipping is pervasive, yet it slips under our radar. We were on the navigational bridge of motor vessel uh, Puelce. Uh, she is a container carrier. I am uh, Captain Razvan Adrian Nitsa from Romania, and I am uh, the master of the, this nice lady. This nice lady is more than 300 meters long. It belongs to a German owner, but it flies a Liberian flag. Its crew is made up of just 20 men, capable of running this floating city with no other help. In its containers, 80,000 tons of products, transported from one end of the planet to the other on behalf of thousands of exporters. What's the real story behind this industry? What's its impact on the environment? And how does it influence our lives? A lot of people attribute globalization to differences in wages. They say companies are going to Southeast Asia because workers earn less. That's not exactly right. Okay? Workers in Southeast Asia have earned less than workers in Europe and in the United States for hundreds of years. And you didn't have this degree of globalization. What made it possible was that transport costs fell enormously. It was possible to make use of those inexpensive workers to make goods that could be sold in foreign market. The fascinating thing about low transport costs enabled by the shipping industry is that really um, a company can treat the whole world as a single factory. Before shipping became widespread, it was common to have very large factories. You would have raw materials coming into one end of the factory, and you would have finished goods going out the other end. Nobody does that anymore. Nobody needs to do that anymore. Shipping has reshuffled the carts. Today, distances no longer exist, and a simple product such as the jacket is a result of planetary collusion. When you see a made in Bangladesh tag on your clothing, unfortunately, you're still not getting the whole story of um, you know, where the cotton was grown, um, where that clothing was sewn into a piece of fabric or where it was dyed. If it has some sort of embellishment on it, 
maybe a rhinestone or a zipper, where were those components made? It may have been a, in a completely different country. All it's telling you really is the factory where it was finally, the final assembly happened. The made-in tag limits itself to the last stage of a long journey. The cotton comes from the United States, but was woven and dyed in India. The buttons were made in Vietnam from plastic collected in Europe that was then processed in China. A total of 48,000 kilometers have been traveled, more than the Earth's circumference, and all that for the price of a subway ticket. Now we've gotten to a point where somehow locally made goods are more expensive than things that are shipped to us from the other side of the world. So um, to me, there's something wrong with that equation. Obviously, there are externalities and hidden costs that the consumer is not paying for. Sixty thousand vessels constantly sail the world's shipping lanes. They are the blood flow that fuels a global machine that supplies seven billion humans. If 90% of what is manufactured or extracted from the planet is transported by sea, how can the shipping industry be so invisible? The ports, because the ships have got bigger and they need more water in which to berth, they've got further out, so you can't, have a sh you can't have a dock in the middle of London anymore. You can't have a dock in the middle of New York because there isn't enough depth of water and there isn't enough space. So they've built these huge ports that are often a mile or so at least outside of centers of habitation and it's just quite difficult to see these ships. And ironically, the reason we can't see the ships is because of their ever-increasing dimensions. ships get bigger and bigger and bigger and it seems as though there's no limits now. There's no record ship size that lasts for more than a few months. Every few months there's a bigger ship that just is launched. The Triple E is a newborn in the shipping family. With its 400 meters length, the equivalent of four football fields, it could hold 10 Airbus A320s in a row. Or the Eiffel Tower. Or why not? the Titanic itself. But its specialty is carrying containers, 18,000 of them on each voyage. If we line them all up, the result would be a 120 kilometer long steel snake. The more a ship can carry, the lower the price of shipping. Along with the economy of scale, there's an invention that has largely contributed to reduce transport costs the container. So before you'd have a ship that would take weeks and months to unload because it would have 195,000 separate pieces of cargo. Now you've got, for example, 6,000 boxes, but they can all be unloaded and loaded in 24 hours. Over 500 million boxes transit the planet each year. 500 million steel boxes, about which we don't know much. What do we carry in containers? What's on your ship? Um, so, uh, except for the uh, IMO cargo, containers containing IMO cargo and uh, refrigerated cargo, uh, practically we don't know exactly uh, what is in that container. Can be, can be anything. Each container is filled and sealed by the sender himself before it's taken to the nearest port and loaded onto a vessel. Once at its destination, the box, still sealed, is unloaded and forwarded to its recipient. And, exceptions aside, only the sender and the recipient know what it contains. Usually the crew and the captains have no idea what they're carrying. These are just all containers to them. The ship line itself may not know what it's carrying. 
the ship line has received what's called a manifest and the manifest has the information from each shipper the shipper is saying we've sent you this container and inside it has wool sweaters it's possible that that container has wool sweaters it's also possible that that container has other things inside it's a mystery however the united nations office on drugs and crime thanks to its inspection program has some idea of what these boxes may contain in the last 10 years we have seized more than 100 tons of cocaine 60 tons of cannabis tons of heroin tons of precursor chemicals for drug production in addition to counterfeit goods misdeclared goods weapons etc i mean there's there's no stopping in uh, in listing what we have uh, seized in this program more than half of the illegal drugs that flood the u.s and europe arrive in these seemingly mundane boxes however these millions of steel boxes can conceal more than narcotics the container is a perfect trojan horse to bypass embargoes and fuel armed conflicts or terrorist organizations around the globe Every port is a gap in the nation's security apparatus. Following 9-11, the U.S., together with its allies, has put in place an inspection policy aimed at scanning 100% of containers. In reality, things are slightly different. Just 2% of all the containers in the world are inspected. Yeah, in my view, you don't need to increase the number of containers being inspected. Fortunately, most people are, le are uh, want to follow the rules and, and they are not criminal. Mm. Well, but there's still 98% that you know, maybe don't yeah, but mo but are not profiled, but that... But most of, most of, but the, mo most of the companies, most uh, traders, they, are, they want to follow the, the law. They are not criminals. Mm. Stonewalling or indifference the authorities and the ship owners close their eyes and hope a terrorist attack on any of the world's 4,500 ports will never happen. It's another symptom of the generalized sea blindness. One of the biggest container shipping companies in the world, in fact the biggest, is, is Maersk, which most people on the street haven't heard of. But it's absolutely enormous. It's got, it has the revenues of um, Microsoft. It's extraordinary, really. If you could imagine the equivalent of the software industry without knowing anything about Steve Jobs or Bill Gates, this is a bit like shipping now. It's like a very, very important part of global trade. Uh, but unlike software or most other sectors, we know almost nothing about the companies that run this, this business. They don't attract any publicity, so even the world's number two, three, four shipping companies most people don't know what the initials stand for they've seen the names on containers but they don't really know much about them they don't know who owns them they probably don't really know which countries they're based in so it is kind of an area of unusually obscure kind of leadership i think 